All right, welcome to the woodshed. You know, I was in the Navy for 21 years as an electronics technician. I've worked on some of the largest tube amps there are, everything from 40,000 watt, 10,000 watt, 200,000 watt amplifiers, including receivers, audio amplifiers, and occasionally radars. So I'm equipped to take this project on, I think, so I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, as you can see, I have started my new project for the year. This is going to be a or clone of a high watt DR103 with maybe a few little mods to it. I'm just collecting parts and exploring different schematics and wiring options. There's a lot of variation in these amps from year to year. I'm trying to research the best tone stack to go with. The, the, so really you're just noodling with one other turret board here, which I've yet to receive, but that's okay. I'm not in a hurry. Here we go. Okay, we're going to be starting this project first by constructing the power supply. I, I plan to do this in basically three iterations. Uh, the power supply, the PA side, and then finally the tone stack. The good news is the power supplies and the PA side are all pretty standard. So it goes together like the wiring diagram. You basically got your on switch, your, your first fuse, mains indicator, charges the primary, the transformer, and then you have your heater winding, your bias winding, and then your high voltage winding. RC network for filtering, and then finally voltage divider networks for the different voltages used throughout the amp. Okay, we can't forget the bridge rectifier portion of the power supply, so when the high voltage side of the secondary is energized, it's still AC, so AC is a sine wave like this, so during a positive swing of the AC uh, voltage, these two diodes conduct uh, providing an output here during the negative side of the of the AC signal or AC voltage uh, These two diodes conduct and they balance each other out and create a rippled kind of a rippled DC or pulsating DC voltage So anyway, that's the power supply Again, we're not going to use this bias circuit uh, Because we're going to do a voltage or voltage doubling bias circuit so I can adjust the bias for a variety of tubes uh, But that will be in the second video and then to figure out the layout, all we have to do is refer to our pictures and diagrams and it's pretty easy to come over here and see where the diodes go. One thing very important is make sure you always put your grommets first. I've done this a few times on projects where I'll get done wiring and then forget the grommets and, get, and there's really nothing to do except cut them and get them that way. But anyway, I installed the grommets to protect the wires from the edge of the chassis because it can be sharp. First rule of component assembly is your mechanical connection first and then your solder connection. A good mechanical connection will be anywhere from three quarters to a full wrap around the turret or a good, you know, sixteenth, eighth of an inch, maybe eighth of an inch depth into the top of the turret. Then you apply your solder. Okay, they're on the turrets. I had to put them into the top because there wasn't enough lead length to go with a wrap. Okay, we're back on the power supply today. You'll notice that I installed the power transformer. Didn't get it all in video because I had to do a little bit of surgery on the basket or the end bell at the bottom, the bottom here to get this notch cut out to make room for the wires because this chassis is not drilled precisely with relation to the, the holes that the wire passes through the holes to mount the transformer. Long story short, not a big deal. It was much easier to do that than it was to drill new holes and all that kind of stuff. I have it snug, I don't have it tightened down just yet. Or like I said before, uh, I like to wait till everything's together and test it before I tighten everything down. Learned that lesson a hard way more than once. About this piece of wood here, with regards to guitars, you know, we, we like to say we like our guitars made out of tone wood. So I thought, well, why wouldn't that work on amplifiers too? So I added a piece of tone wood to the amplifier. This is maple to make the amplifier sound better. Actually, I'm just kidding. That is just there to help me balance it when I have it flipped upside down. It's the exact same height as the power transformer. And as you'll see, Voila! Anyway, there's the diodes installed. Check them all out, they're good. I made sure they're oriented the proper direction with the cathodes in the proper direction. Here's our wire leads coming up for a power transformer. Uh, one thing about this version that I'm gonna build here, it will not have a voltage selector because it only takes, only takes uh, 110 or 115 or 120. It does not take the European voltages, therefore no need for a voltage selector. 
that makes it a little easier and gives me an extra hole in the chassis in case I want to mount something else. One other mod I'm going to do to this power supply, aside from the bias adjust, is we're going to be putting a bias test points in the back with a one ohm resistor dropped across the cathode of all of the power tubes. Because of Ohm's law, if you have one ohm, the amount of voltage equals the amount of current. So anyway, something like that. And I can measure for bias. Next, we're going to install the capacitors and get those wired up as well. Okay, I got all the strapping done on the power supply turret boards. Normally the strapping is underneath and I don't like that because I want to be able to get to everything. I've seen this method before too and it works just fine. Maybe it doesn't look as neat, but at least I can get to everything. This one I redid uh, because I felt it should be insulated, but these inner ones are fine and they're out of the way of everything. So we're good there. This is pretty much basic electrical wiring on the primary side. It's just like wiring a lamp in a lot of ways. So it's, I think of them as just power cords. You're wiring between switches and fuse holders and uh, where the power cord goes. So this is fairly straightforward. And hopefully we can have a power on test before the end of the week. All right, let's get her done. Okay, it's the time of reckoning. We're gonna do our first uh, power on test. I, I got everything loosey-goosey in here because I wanna make sure everything's gonna work before I go ahead and tidy up the wires and clean all the turret boards with denatured alcohol. I went ahead and got a LED lamp that works off of uh, 110 uh, to let me know when the power's on. Of course, these switches are upside down and so are the indicators. Before we put this in the head shell, I'll be turning these to the other direction, so up is on. Got my meter hooked up here to the standby switch uh, input terminal. You know, that's the 480 volt supply to the tubes, but it is in the off position, so is the main. And I should get 479, 480 volts, and that's if it doesn't blow up. This is the first time turning this on. Excited as you are, <laughs> let's see what happens. Fire in a hole. Oh, look at that. I don't see any smoke. It's a good sign. I did install these test points. They will be connected with a one ohm five watt resistor to the cathodes of these tubes. That way I can adjust the uh, bias uh, from outside the amp and not have to get inside of it. But yeah, looking good. 482, indicator works. Now it's just time to tidy this up and then we can move on to the bias circuit in the PA section. Never forget that before uh, going inside of an amp, after you turn it off, look at the de gradual decrease in this voltage. It doesn't happen right away. That's because these capacitors are, are discharging. So before we actually touch anything inside, uh, we'll be using something like this with alligator clips, of course, insulated to shorten out all the capacitors so we don't electrocute ourselves. You know, as long as I've been talking, it's still down to 200 volts. So, wow. Good, cap good capacitors, I'll say that. 